Hey guys, we are back and talking about the physiologic changes that occur in our geriatric population. So although aging is a normal process, not all individuals age in the same way or at the same rate. A lot of it plays into our genetics. Some of it is our personal lifestyle choices. Um, all of our experiences in life affect though in the way in which we grow older. Every body system undergoes changes as we age too. So it's not just one thing, like not just our skin that changes as we age, it's every single body system. So as individuals move into their 60s and beyond, they will begin to show the physiologic changes that are a part of the aging process. So let's go through each of those body systems now. The first one we're going to talk about is the sensory changes in older adults. So if you'll remember back to our body system reviews, um, that's going to include eyes, ears, um, nose, any of those sensory organs. So vision, we have lots of visual changes as we age. Um, presbyopia, this is age-related farsightedness, so it's harder for them to see. Floaters, they may have tiny specks that float across their field of vision. Um, it can be a sign of something more serious, which is retinal detachment. Um, so it will need to be assessed to see if it is something more concerning or if they're simply going to be living with these little floaters. Dry eyes, lack of tears due to decreased production. Um, they may need to have eye drops daily. Cataracts, this is clouding of the structure of um, the lens and it prevents light from entering the eye um, and it being interpreted by the retina. So sometimes you'll see like halos around lights and some of those risk factors are alcohol use, diabetes, high blood pressure, exposure to a ton of sunlight. Um, all of these things can cause cataracts. Um, they do have cataract surgery now um, and also some eye drops that help with cataracts as well. Glaucoma, group of related eye disorders that result in increased pressure in the eye causing damage to the optic, optic nerve, excuse me. Most often this is going to be caused by diabetes, but it can also be a result of um, heart disease, high blood pressure, even sickle cell, um, and um, they're going to be prescribed eye drops to help with this pressure in the eye. Age-related macular degeneration. This is damage to the macula um, and this helps with our sharp central vision. Um, so things are going to be a little bit distorted. Um, the center of vision becomes distorted as well. Presbycupus. This is um, related to our hearing. So we're moving on to our ears. And um, this is age-related hearing loss. As we age, we just can't hear as well. Tinnitus is going to be ringing in the ears. And then lastly, vestib vestibular disorders. This is more of the inner ear um, disorders that um, result from a, a, or cause some of our equilibrium to be off. Spatial orientation causes dizziness, difficulty walking, or even standing. And then impaired taste and smell. As we get older, our senses just aren't as sharp. So our taste buds won't taste things quite as sharply. Um, we also can't smell as well. So what do you think this would be a risk factor for? Or what could this be um, troublesome over? What about if we can't smell a fire or smell burning? Um, so this is really important. Um, that impaired taste they may not want to eat as much because things don't taste as good um, so just kind of thinking through that and how it affects our um, our elderly population all right let's talk about the integumentary system this is our skin system and as we age our skin becomes more fragile with less subcutaneous and connective tissues our sweat glands become smaller and our body is less sensitive to the heat and cold um, hair loses color and becomes thinner, right? The skin dries out and is less elastic and our fingernails and our toenails thicken as we age. The development of skin cancer can also occur on those areas that have been exposed to sunlight throughout our lives. Basal and squamous cell carcinomas cancers are the most common type um, seen in our older population. So it's important to have a yearly skin assessment done during those annual physical exams. 
our nervous system. So remember, this is going to be including our brain. So the brain shrinks in size as we get older because our brain cells do not continue to divide throughout our lives. So there may be some loss of memory or a delay, just a little bit longer to recall things, um, can be expected in many aging people. There can be problems with balance, temperature regulation, pain sensation, insomnia. Um, these can all occur because of changes to the nervous system. Some of the most um, troublesome of uh, the diseases or disorders to the nervous system include dementia. Um, so this is an overarching term for um, core mental function impairments um, to memory, communication, ability to focus, um, and reasoning and judgment. And Alzheimer's disease falls within dementia. TIAs, these are transient ischemic, ischemic attacks to our brain, also known as mini strokes. Um, so they're a temporary blockage to an artery in the brain, um, and it can cause facial droops, arm and leg weakness, um, changes in our speech. Often it's more of a slurred speech, um, and these are things we need to look out for for signs of TIAs, but also more importantly, full-on strokes. Um, and this is when there's a complete interruption to the blood supply in the brain causing um, loss of neurological function. So causing those um, symptoms to occur. And it's very important that you um, inform these elderly patients that they, if they have any symptoms, they need to act fast. Um, they can only give this clot but blessed busting medication within four hours of symptom onset. So they need to get to the ER immediately. Um, so they to see if they're a candidate for this medication. All right, moving on to musculoskeletal disorders in our older adults. So um, they have less muscle strength, right? Less mobility um, and activities of daily living become more difficult as we age. Some of this is related to poor nutrition, malnourishment, and due to the lack of exercise um, as we age and get older. Um, and it also prolongs our healing time as well. So continuing our physical activity and having a nutritious diet as we age, including dairy products, so things that have a lot of vitamin D are important for that bone and muscle um, loss to, to prevent that. So some of the most um, common diseases of the musculoskeletal order, disorder would be that muscle loss. And then also osteoporosis. Um, this is demineralization of the bones, and they're more likely to have a fracture if you are suffering from osteoporosis. <clears throat> um, some of the signs and symptoms of osteoporosis besides fractures can also be a loss of height over time. So again, where we're looking at height and weight um, for our elderly patients, still important throughout our entire lifespan. Um, a stooped posture. Um, our posture is not quite as erect as it m once was. Um, and then risk factor. Women are often more at risk for osteoporosis as well. All right, the respiratory system of our older adults. So as we age, our breathing capacity diminishes um, and oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange is lessened. Our lungs, like other parts of our body, lose, loses their elasticity and they may experience shortness of breath, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing, and they're more prone to pneumonia. So it's important to keep up our physical activity as we age because that can help um, prevent some of these respiratory conditions. It helps maintain our breathing capacity, um, maintaining that deep breathing and being able to cough effectively and get that phlegm up um, so as not to put us at risk for developing pneumonia. All right, the cardiovascular system. So heart disease and blood vessel disorders are the major cause of death in the United States. I'm sure you guys know that by now. Um, but lifestyle has been um, found to be the most significant risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So again, as we age, that exercise and healthy eating is so, so, so important um, to help maintain good cardiac output throughout your life. Um, 
And so some of the common disorders that you'll see for the cardiovascular system is atrial fibrillation. This is actually um, an abnormal heartbeat due to changes um, the electrical activity in the heart. It actually causes the atrium to flutter um, and they're not pumping effectively. And it actually puts you at risk for um, having a stroke. So that's common. Um, often patients will be put on an atrial fibrillation medica medication if they're diagnosed with this. Arterial sclerosis, this is going to be um, a buildup of fatty deposits within those arteries. Um, and again, this can cause lots of issues um, and you may start having chest pain, difficulty breathing due to this arterial sclerosis and can even result in a heart attack. Congestive heart failure, um, this is decreased ability of our heart muscle to pump blood to the body effectively. Um, it can be related to the elasticity um, of the heart muscle um, due to aging or disease processes. Um, we're going to have a cough, you're going to be tired, weak, may even have some chest pain, um, needing to urinate at night. Um, swelling in the legs. These can all be signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure. The GI system, quickly go through these. So our stomach secretions and motility slow as we get older. Fewer calories are needed just because we're not moving around as much and our metabolism is slowing down. Eating is social as well as physiological. So it's important to make sure that we're still being social while we eat um, and to have others around us. Often older people are more isolated, um, but if they can be around others, it will help stimulate better appetites and being able to eat and keep up that nourishment. Um, malnourishment is not uncommon for our elderly individuals. Sometimes it's even related to financial um, constraints. So just thinking through that um, when you're talking to your patients. So some common disorders are constipation. Again, things are slowing down. So it's important um, to really reiterate drink, eating and drinking the right thing. So drinking lots of water, eating green leafy vegetables that help with our motility in our digestive system. And then esophagitis um, is inflammation of the esophagus, sometimes caused by um, NSAIDs, which are anti-inflammatory medications like aspirin or ibuprofen. Um, so it's important to teach them to take those medications with a lot of water so that this won't occur. The urinary system. So as we age, our kidneys decrease in size, causing us to have less urine output. Medications are not excreted as quickly as they once were when we were younger. So these medications can cause an increase or a buildup um, because the kidneys aren't being able to process them and we're not able to expose or get rid of these medications as quickly. The bladder walls are not as um, elastic as they once were. They're more, um, more inelastic and the ability to empty the bladder completely becomes a little bit more difficult for both men and women. So some of these disorders include acute or chronic renal failures, so our kidneys start failing, sometimes even to the point where you have to be put on dialysis. Um, urinary retention, this is an inability to empty the bladder, um, and so they're retaining that urine. Cystitis, this is a bladder infection, um, or is often the cause, so inflammation to the bladder, remember that itis at the end of the word. Um, and if it is due to bacteria, like a bladder infection, obviously antibiotics will be um, needed. And I will mention that for our older adults, sometimes they are able to tell us if they have um, irritation when they're urinating or they won't have those symptoms. They'll maybe be more confused and we have to figure it out that that's caused by this urinary tract infection. And then incontinence, this is the inability to control that urine from that bladder, so they may have to wear diapers as they get older. Lastly, I'm going to hit on the reproductive system of older adults. So men, men continue to produce sperm well after their 50s, um, but their testosterone levels start to go down um, after they go through midlife changes. And this is known as andropause. And, um, it includes that benign hypertrophy of the prostate because remember I mentioned that in our male reproductive system um, lecture. And then women experience menopause at around 55. Again, this fluctuates person to person, but estrogen produced by the ovaries stops. So changes in the female um, genitalia occurs, often shrinkage of that genitalia. 
vinyl secretions um, are diminished, the vagina becomes smaller, and infections become more likely, and they may need estrogen replacement therapy to help.